Okay, last time I uh, finished up with a little bit of story about Fred Banting and the struggles he was going through. And I want to switch now to talk about medical schools. And I mentioned this previously, the Flexner Report. So first, who was, what was the Flexner Report? Well, there was a man, a man named Abraham Flexner. Here's a photo of him. Um, he graduated from Johns Hopkins and eventually moved to Louisville, Kentucky to teach high school. While he was teaching high school, um, he had a lot of ideas about how to change education and he ends up opening his own high school that kind of gets rid of the traditional educational practices and, and really has some innovative things. He goes on and publishes a book in 1908. And the book was called The American College, A Criticism. The book is widely read, in particular by the president of the Carnegie Foundation, a man named Henry Pritchett. And see, Henry Pritchett, well, Henry Pritchett is in charge of the Carnegie Foundation. The Carnegie Foundation was uh, a big charitable organization funded by Andrew Carnegie. Andrew Carnegie was kind of the Bill Gates of his time. He made a, a fortune and started a foundation to give away his fortune. And he was focused on education in the United States. So Henry Pritchett was appalled at the state of medical schools. And he wanted someone to go and write a report on it that, that would trigger reform in the medical schools. And he thought after reading Flexner's book on the American College that he would be the perfect person to write this report on medical education. Got Abraham Flexner to come by, um, set him up, paid him for a year or so to just go around and visit all the medical schools in the United States and Canada and just look into what's going on there. Uh, what, what kind of facilities do they have? What type of requirements do they have for admission? And what kind of physicians are they producing? So he did that. And I want to look, I'll, I'll show you a few examples uh, from his report. And I'll link the report so you can take a look at the whole thing. Here's a, uh, the title page from the Flexner Report. You can see it's called Medical Education in the United States and Canada. And it was first published in 1910 and written by Abraham Flexner. The table of contents here, you can see it, it goes through a general historical uh, progression of medical education and how, how things are looking. And then at the bottom, you can see in part two, it starts covering the medical schools in different states and it goes on and on. So what I'm going to do is look at just a few of these medical schools because I think it really illustrates um, the diversity of medical education at the time. Okay, so the first one we're going to look at is in California and you can see this is California and then he starts going to Los Angeles and then here's the name of the first school. College of Physicians and Surgeons. Established in 1903. Let me go to the next page. As an independent school, see this is interesting. It, in 1909, it was nominally the medical department of USC. When the former medical department of USC cut loose in order to become the Los Angeles Clinical Department of the University of California. So it sounds like USC's medical school in 1909 quit USC and moved to UCLA. Uh, and then you can see this is the serious with seriousness with which the University of Southern California treats medical education may be gathered from this amusing performance. So you can see Abraham Flexner is kind of snarky and he's got his comments throughout this report and makes it quite entertaining. Uh, I guess the UCLA's medical school, at the time it, it required a high school graduation or equivalent for the entrance requirement. It had 32 students. Um, you could see the fees amounting to $4,000. That's the total tuition from all the students. It has a description here of the laboratory facilities 
and the clinical facilities. And you can see this is the, the date that Abraham Flexner visited in 1909. You can also see some of the details here. So for instance, in the clinical facilities, it says um, the rooms are poorly equipped and cared for. There is no clinical laboratory. The attendance is very small for the neighborhood is decidedly well-to-do. Okay, so that's, that's the UCLA slash USC medical school. Um, if I scroll down some, next one, the second one in, in Los Angeles is called the University of California Clinical Department. This is the other half of what I just talked about. Up until March 1909, this school offered a four-year course as the medical department of the University of Southern California. It has now become a second clinical department of the University of California and therefore will aft offer after June 1910 only the third and fourth year's work, C6. So I think what um, medical school six is, is the, the medical school in San Francisco, what we would call UCSF Medical School right now. And at the time, uh, this number two medical school was just the, uh, or would be the third and fourth year for students at UCSF. And then if I scroll down, um, you can see this, this is kind of the, here, this one, which I'm sure no longer exists. Um, is typical of many of the medical schools he ran into. So it's called the California Medical College, eclectic, eclectic. Um, let's see, organized in Oakland in 1879. This school has had, led a roving and precarious existence in the meanwhile. So the entrance requirement, nominal, which means basically nothing. Attendance, nine, of whom seven are from California. Um, it has, okay, here's the, the laboratory facilities. The school occupies a few neglected rooms on the second floor of a 50-foot frame building. Its so-called equipment is dirty and disorderly beyond description. Its outfit in anatomy consists of a small box of bones and the dried up filthy fragments of a single cadaver. A few bottles of reagents constitute the chemical laboratory. A cold and rusty incubator a single microscope and a few unlabeled wet specimens form the so-called equipment for pathology and bacteriology. And then here's his, his kind of conclusion. The school is a disgrace to the state whose laws permit its existence. So if you page through this, you'll find a lot of schools like that. And that kind of, that was really the state of medical education at the time. So I'm going to show um, a few other ones because they come up in this. One would be Harvard University. So let me um, scroll down to that. The Medical School of Harvard University. So you can see the entrance requirement here. The, the student has a choice between the bachelor's degree or certain definite requirements in science and modern languages representing two years of undergraduate work. The um, let's see, resources available. The department has an endowment of $3 million. The fees are merged in the general income of the school. Uh, the annual budget of is 251000 of which 72000 are derived from tuition fees. So I, apparently these um, resources available sound like an, a number, the amount of dollars they have per year to run the place. Um, the laboratory facilities, so this is at Harvard, it says the laboratories are unexcelled in equipment and organization in respect to both teaching and research. The clinical facilities, they have abundant clinical material available at the Massachusetts General Hospital, the City Hospital, and elsewhere. So you can see he's got a high opinion of Harvard University, unlike the um, eclectic medical college in California. And so let me go find another one I wanted to show you, the University of Toronto. Okay, so this is the University of Toronto Faculty of Medicine. And remember, that's where Fred Banting went to get his medical education. 
So the entrance requirement is the junior matriculation examination strictly enforced. Um, that's, that's essentially in Canada something like a high school degree. Um, the, so then the, the course, the medical education course, covers five years. You can see the attendance uh, was 592 and they have here the, the resources available for maintenance. Um, they, it sounds like they've got $64,500 per year to run their medical school. Um, now then we've talked about the laboratory facilities and clinical facilities. So the laboratories are in point of construction equipment, equipment among the best on the continent. So he has a high opinion of the University of Toronto's medical school here. Increasing attention has recently been devoted to the cultivation of research. There are both general and departmental laboratories, an excellent museum, and all necessary teaching accessories. And then the clinical facilities, the school has recently perfected a very intimate relationship with the new Toronto General Hospital, by which its faculty obtains complete control of the clinical advantages of some 500 beds. Students have free access to all wards, clinical, laboratory, dispensary, etc. Other large local hospitals are also available. And that was March 1909. So the University of Toronto Hosp uh, Medical School, he's got a high opinion of in the Flexner Report. Okay, and then the final one I want to show you is the University of Western Ontario. Okay, so we'll talk about the University of Western Ontario soon in the context of Fred Banting. But you can see here, this is it, uh, what, what he was calling it. Western University Medical Department, um, and it's in it's in London, Ontario. So established 1881, practically an independent school. So that means it's not associated with any other um, university. The entrance requirements here again are nominal. You know, essentially none. The student, for his own protection, is expected to fulfill the requirements of the place in which he intends to practice. The medical course covers four years. So the teaching staff, he's, there's 28 professors, 12 of other grade. Um, there are, this, they've, they've got $11,590 to run the school each year. And then here's, here's the laboratory facilities description. These consist of a single room called the Laboratory of Pathology, Bacteriology, and Histology, whose equipment consists of microscopes and some unlabeled specimens. No microtome, cut sections, incubator, or sterilizer being visible. A wretched chemical laboratory, a wretched chemical laboratory, and an ordinary dissecting room. There is no outfit for physiology, pharmacology, or clinical microscopy, and no museum deserving the name. There are there are a few hundred books locked in cases to which the janitor carries the key. So that's their library. Um, and then they've got his description of the clinical facilities. These are entirely inadequate. They are confined almost wholly to a small number of beds in the municipal hospital. The school has no dispensary. So that's October 1909. Okay, the, the Flexner report there reported on the various medical schools, and I touched on those there, but I wanted to show one part where Abraham Flexner wasn't so visionary, and he has this, it's um, the final chapter in the report, chapter 14, which is entitled The Medical, Medical Education of the Negro, and this is um, a one-page chapter, and it's just incredibly racist. The basic assumption is that um, black physicians are only useful to treat black patients and that they need to educate these black physicians because if they don't the black diseases will work their way to the white people um, and so his solution is really a a separate medical education for black physicians this kind of set back medical education for minorities in the United States um, decades because the report was very influential due to the other parts 
and this chapter 14 uh, was really troubling. When we left off with Fred Banting, I showed you that scene from the film where he was, uh, first his dreams were crushed, there was no position for him as a surgeon. He went to London, Ontario to open up an office and you know he was sitting around with no patients. Finally at the end of the scene one patient came in. He was all acting like he's very busy. So he's you know sets up this practice in London, Ontario, has very few patients coming, so not much business, and he needs money. So he gets this opportunity to teach at that medical school in London, Ontario. Remember, it was called Western University Medical School. It was the one with a wretched chemical laboratory in the Flexner Report. And it had a few hundred books in the library that were locked up and only the janitor had the key. That's what it said in the Flexner Report. So not a great medical school, um, but it's the, the people running that medical school. It's kind of like a business and they need someone to teach the classes so that they can collect the money from their students. So they get Fred Banting to do it. And I'm going to show another scene from that film of him teaching at the medical school. <laughs> 